feeling so small. Watch the clock ticking off the wall. But tonight I'm letting it go. Spend my coin for sure. Hey guys, it's Luke here and welcome back to another video. Now this is a strange sight, isn't it? We've got my M140i next to a very similar Golf R to what I used to own. Also, whilst we're here, um, I've got a new lens. It's a wide angle, so it's, uh, well, it's a lot easier for me to use at least. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think down below of that. But today we are, well, we're not going to be really showing much of the M140i because I want to spend a little bit more time around one of these. Now for those of you who are new to the channel um, and kind of subscribed when I got the 140i then you may not know that I owned a pretty much identical Golf R previously. I sold it about two or three months ago now I reckon um, and uh, well following on from do I regret buying uh, an M140i I thought I'd meet up with uh, a very similar Golf R to what I used to have and kind of speak about well, do I miss it? Do I regret selling it? Uh, and bits and bobs like that. But uh, yeah, this should be really interesting, especially for me to experience one from the passenger seat because, of course, I owned mine, so I spent most of my time in the driver's seat. But this spec is awesome. Well, a bit biased because it's virtually the same as what I had. So we've got the lapis blue with the 19-inch gloss black Pretorias. But you might spot a few other little mods here and there which the owner has done to it, which I'll introduce you to very shortly. But uh, yeah, we have a blue Golf R back on the channel. <laughs> Okay, so Alex, welcome to the channel. You are the owner of the Golf R. I'm kind of very jealous of you, actually. <laughs> but we'll, we'll get onto that a little bit later. So basically, run us around it. So it's a 2018? It's it? a late 18? 2017 oh, okay. uh, Golf R. Yep. Uh, 310 PS model, mm -hmm. Yep. Um, before all the GPF, OPF scandal. Yeah. BW, so we don't <laughs> scandal. Have to contend with that. <laughs> well, I think people watching my videos as well will know that because of the what I've done to my Con 40. Um, lapis blue, of course. Fastest colour. Yeah, it has to be done. Has <laughs> to be done. Uh, and also the 19-inch uh, Pretorias as well, which make it look super cool. Uh, in terms of options, you've got a few which I didn't have on my car, which I'm quite jealous of. Uh, should we have a little wander around? Yeah, sure. Have so, a look. Um, as you mentioned, we've got the 19-inch Pretorias. Yep. Um, yeah, it, they were definitely a must yeah, when, uh, when I spec the car up. Black wing mirrors. Yep. Um, also. Uh, got the panoramic sunroof, which a lot of yeah. people don't have on these. And <laughs> I didn't have it did. on mine yet, which um, I was kind of very jealous of you when I saw that. Um, anyway, just quickly actually, I like what you've done with the, the calipers down. You're saying that that's literally just a little sticker basically. Yeah, so there's a few of them around the car. Yeah. Um, I'll show you those. But yeah, um, guy on the channel, EZ Mods, mm -hmm. um, does vinyl inlays for tons and tons of uh, owners clubs now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, great, great quality vinyl, completely customizable, mm. um, and yeah, it's a nice, little, nice little touch. Yeah, off. really easy to do, I guess as well. It, yeah, the, the, the plate just pops off, um, and yeah. it's a very close color match to the Lapis as well. Yeah, that's true actually. Yeah, that's true. No, it looks good. It sets it off nicely because normally they're just black calipers, aren't they? Just standard black with yeah. a grey, grey white R, which fades yeah. quite often as well. Oh, does um, it? Okay, that's interesting. So this, the, the high quality heat resistant vinyl. Yeah. Um, so that. What won't have any issues there? Yeah, no, definitely. Now, round to the back, you've done a few little bits as well, mostly the exhaust, <laughs> yes. which I think actually, let's get a little shot from back here. So, it's a Remus back box, right? Remus non resonated cat back. Okay, yeah. Um, from uh, Tuning Works, yeah. here in South London. Yeah. Great guy for all my mods, um, re re really good guy, and he can source pretty much anything yeah. you need. Um, so, I've had that fitted a couple of weeks now, actually. Okay, yeah, so yeah. fairly recently then. So, no, it looks awesome. Significantly bigger tips than, than standard. You had the standard exhaust on there before. Yeah, I had the standard exhaust. I did have a res delete, yep. similar to yours. Mm -hmm. um, has this got great. a res delete on it or is yeah. it? Oh, yeah, it does so, yeah so, so it's a non-resonated Oh, yeah, of course, back. yeah, you said, yeah. Um, and yeah, the, the res delete's great, but just always wanting more sound. Yeah, that's it. Well, it's such a quick and easy mod, isn't it? Just to do it. So exactly. that's exactly why that was pretty much my first mod. Um, but yeah, no, this is weird to be seeing another 
well, Lapis Blue Golf R through the viewfinder. Have a little peek inside. Now, this is a five door model, similar to mine. In fact, it's, it's pretty much identical, isn't it? Well, apart from a few little bits. You've got the, well, tell us about the seats because that was quite an interesting. So the point. seats have actually been retrimmed. Yeah. Um, so they were cloth from the factory, but I thought I really did want leather seats yeah. in the car. So um, they were done by a company up in Colchester. Mm -hmm. And that's um, basically like skins just over the top. Exactly, yeah. Basically. So Actually, they just, cool. I think underneath that is probably what was the, the cloth leather, the cloth yeah. seats even. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they had the car for a couple of days before I picked it up. I felt and that. yeah, they, they look almost as if it's come from the factory. So yeah, very. No. Well, I, I wouldn't very not have noticed it to be fair. And then you've got a raw steering wheels, did you say as well? Yep, raw, raw, raw steering wheels, wheel done by cool. Jack over there. I've had that. Yeah. Had that probably over a year now. Um, holds up well. Yeah. Amazing quality. You can't, you can't fault it really. Mm. Yeah, no, it, it really sets it off nicely, especially because you get the 12 o'clock marker, which you don't get from the factory, no, which so just I with went, the standard wheel. I went the 12 o'clock stripe to match the details on the seats. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, the, the white arm, etc., and the, the stitching and the perforated sides. And it is yeah. slightly thicker. I think it's about one mil or two millimeters thicker oh, okay. than the stock wheel. Oh, that's um, interesting. Yeah, ju just a few aesthetic stuff. Like yeah. Touches, really. And then a DSG, of course, of course, has to be done. Well, I think one last thing we'll do is have a little peek. Oh, there goes my key. <laughs> Reminding me that I still own a BMW. Have a little peek underneath here because you've got an intake. I do, it, yeah. Which so I obviously didn't have on mine. That makes a huge difference. It does. You, it, do you notice it? You'll probably pick it up on camera yeah. when we go out in the car, um, especially because you'll be on the passenger side. Yeah, that's true. Um, that's true. It is because it's an open intake rather than a closed one, yeah. um, it is a lot louder, yeah. a lot louder. Okay. Um, That'll be interesting to see, because obviously I live with mine just with the stock system, so it'll be yeah. interesting to see what it's like um, with an aftermarket stuff. And then other than that, it's all complete stock, stock turbo and everything. Stock turbo, yeah. Um, Nothing, but these things, uh, to be fair, they, they produce enough power, don't they? It's well over 300. I dynoed mine with a Resdely, and that was at 322. Wow. So slightly more than what they said. Um, for factory, but uh, yeah, I'm Plenty. really excited to get back out on it. So, should we, uh, should we go for a cruise? Let's do it. Let's do it. Sweet, I'm excited for this. to be back in here. I think the only time I ever was in the passenger seat of my car was when we were going through Europe when my girlfriend Chloe was driving off that oh, of good. Yeah, on the Euro trip. Oh. So I think it's probably worth me getting onto the topic of... Oh. <laughs> uh, just the outright power is just so quick because obviously four wheel drive, I'm not used to that now. It's, uh... Used to doing that all the time. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, do I miss my Golf R? Yes, <laughs> yes I do. Um, but that doesn't mean I regret selling it. So I thought I'd do this video really to follow on from the video I did with the 140i of do I regret buying that? No, I don't. Um, but I do miss the Golf R, and there is a few reasons behind that. Um, I think probably the first one and probably the most obvious one is because of YouTube. I think if I didn't have a YouTube channel, then I'd still have my Golf R. <laughs> so, so even at low revs. Oh, no, you, don't, you don't even have to take it to the red. No. Nah. To get the, uh, to get the sound out of it. Oh, it's proper, <laughs> proper. Um, so yeah, I keep on getting distracted. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> um, so I think, yeah, if I didn't have my YouTube channel, then I'd probably still have this car um, because I felt like I'd done all the videos on it and everything. Um, I kind of wanted to spice things up a bit, so that's kind of why I sold it. And also because the mileage was getting quite high on mine. Sure. Um, and obviously when they get to a certain mileage, 
you lose a load of money because I didn't have it on finance or anything. It was like literally everything that I own <laughs> in yeah. one, one asset. One, yeah, one <laughs> asset and it was just going down. So I thought, why not? Let's buy a BMW, which is arguably going to lose even more money, <laughs> which is probably pretty stupid. But um, yeah, no, I, I do miss the car. And I, I would like to own another one one day, um, but it's just cool to to kind of, well. Change it up a bit. Yeah, change it up a bit and also to, to experience one again. Um, so yeah, no, this thing is, um, I I kind of almost forgot what it was like to be in one <laughs> because well it's only like two months ago now but it just brings back all the memories I mean it kind of it's the thing which made my channel really this car blow up yeah yeah um, they so. they are very popular cars and they there's are a big scene for them there is a big scene for the golf R, and they're loved by a lot of people they are that's it yeah which is it makes the ownership a lot more fun I guess as well because you've got a lot of people that share the same passion. What are your thoughts on the, the Remus versus your Aquapoint? Good question actually. Hang on. <laughs> to be fair, just like that, that sounded very similar. Yeah. One thing which the Acra did, which I noticed, I think it's because I had the res deleted as well. Sure. Is very high I think when you got to about 4k RPM, so four to six and a half, you get like a you get quite a lot of turbo noise, like okay. whistle through the exhaust. Oh wow. Um, which was quite interesting, but it sounded quite good. Um, th to me, they sound pretty similar, actually. Yeah. But I almost prefer the tips on these, because um, I, I made a video uh, quite a while back with mine, on my old car, shall I say, <laughs> um, <laughs> saying that like when I was looking at getting a Golf R, I didn't like the tips on the Akrapovich. Okay. Um, but then, obviously, I went and heard how they sound when they got <laughs> fitted and kind of had to go and find one. I think one thing which is not very appealing about the Acra is you can't really retrofit them. Well, you can, but you, you just can't find them anywhere. That's the thing, isn't it? it, it it's locating one, and yeah. if you're, especially if you're buying the, the premium, but I mean, it's not cheap anyway no. from the factory, but buying it aftermarket, they do put a hefty premium on them. They do, yeah. I don't think you can buy them for VW anymore. Really? Yeah. Um, which is interesting. It sounds so good. Oh dear. Do you want to sell your car? <laughs> <laughs> I always no. fancied a BMW. Oh, yeah, did you? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I could just tell the comments already. They're just going to analyse my facial expressions. Like, oh yeah, no, he's definitely lying. <laughs> going up the revs it is very loud in here yeah but, uh, oh, cheeky pull. it's just that instant power oh dear me I completely forgot what it was like to not spin <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a lot of fun though a lot of fun yeah the having the exhaust gives it it almost feels like a new car yes I know exactly um, what you mean I mean, the car had a bit of character anyway with the rest of it. Yeah. But this thing just makes noises that you, you aren't expecting and it mm. just brings a smile to your face. You know? Yeah, that's it. And obviously with the 7.5, you get the pops and bangs as well. You don't exactly. have to map them in. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but yeah, no, this is it's weird. I keep on going back to it, but it's weird to be back in one. <laughs> I keep on thinking, oh, why is someone driving my car? And then I realise it's not my car. <laughs> that you really notice that intake there. Yeah. I'm hoping that GoPro is going to pick it up because it's quite close to where we'll see the intake is. Yeah, you definitely notice it on the passenger side. Yeah. Um, I've had friends take videos from the passenger seat, and you re it really does come really through the video yeah. a lot more. I mean, I can hear it sat here, but even more so from the yeah. passenger side. Yeah. <laughs> Drive.
up like that. <laughs> so obviously you've done a few little bits so far, which I think have made the car look pretty, pretty sweet. Actually, I, I'm a bit biased. <laughs> um, but have you got any more plans for it? Do you reckon? Um, looks what well, I mean. I, I initially went for looks tunnel. <laughs> tunnel. <laughs>